At the very same time, a boy from Wisconsin was obsessing about how to get more volume from his guitar. That boy is now a legend, and he's still playing every Monday night in New York City. He's a wild and sexy guitar god. <laughs> and he looks pretty hot for 91. Les Paul is the name on one of the world's most popular electric guitars, favored by players from Jimmy Page to Slash. And his reputation as a sonic genius is secured by his invention of multi-track recording, featured in a string of hit records that he made in the 40s and 50s. Here are Les Paul and his wife, Mary Ford, returning home from a Hollywood premiere to tell you about how they make Capitol Records right at home. They did the multiple recording of 10 guitars and 12 voices for How High the Moon at home here in Hollywood and keep recorders in their New York apartment and even in their car. Well, yes, this is the house where we made those records last year. His career in music has followed the fortunes of the guitar and that perennial struggle to be heard. As Les himself put it, back in the 30s, more volume meant more tips, so he decided to electrify. The first time I tried it, I used a phonograph pickup, took the needle and I put it right down here. And when I did that, I got feedback and all kinds of problems. And none of them were complimentary. So you just took apart so your took, father's Vitrola? No, your... no, I took the telephone. You took the telephone? Took the telephone. If you have a telephone, you talk into the transmitter, you talk to, into the sim, and you're talking to somebody, that's a microphone. This part that you listen to is just two magnetic coils, okay? Those coils are wound on magnets, and by taking those out of the phone and putting them under the string, I said, lo and behold, look what I got, <laughs> okay? So it was pretty simple. Uh, it was right in my living room. I didn't have to leave the living room to build an electric guitar. But when he amplified his acoustic guitar, Les had all sorts of feedback problems. He began experimenting with more solid materials to get a cleaner sound. So he headed for the railroad track to see which worked best, wood or steel. How did you find the Now watch. I live right next to a railroad track. I just borrowed a wagon without the horse, and six of us kids pull the wagon with this railroad track. And we took the railroad track, suspended a string along it, and compared it to a soft piece of wood, like, like balsa, like pine. And when I heard the wood and I heard the steel railroad track, I went running to my mother and I says, hey, it's the railroad track. That's the answer. And mother says, the day you see a cowboy on a horse <laughs> playing a piece of railroad track. And so that blew that away. His mother had a point, and we'll come back to that. But Les had only just begun his adventures in electricity, and where better to pursue his quest than the electric city that was New York? When he got there, he seized the chance to conduct some unofficial market research on the electric guitar as it reached its largest audience ever on NBC Radio. Les's jazz trio was performing nightly with Fred Waring at the Vanderbilt Theatre on Broadway. The performances were broadcast to an audience of millions via the radio, and many of the listeners wrote in with requests. Les played two sets a night, one on the acoustic and one on the electric guitar. The question was, which did everyone like best? We said, well, let's take a vote on it. But you didn't have to vote. It was hands down, everybody said electric. So I said to Fred, why did you pick the electric? He says, well, everybody hears you. And you can make your sound different than any other guitar player out there. And I said, well, that's basically why I want the electric guitar, is because I'm no longer a wimp. 
with this guitar. I now am a giant because the saxophone player, I can just turn that volume up. I can turn that volume up and I'm right in there with the best of them, you know. Who the hell wants to hear an electric guitar player? <laughs>